Hello, welcome to my channel once again. In the previous videos, we saw how we could use the event grid trigger to fire a function up working with event grid. In this video, we want to make use of the HTTP trigger. And this is important because um, in the case of event grid trigger, um, the libraries that we're using, it's easier to connect to them and so many things happening in the background is being done for us. But in the case of HTTP trigger, the handshake that is happening, we are going to have to have some more elaborate codes around that. So you see the validation URL, the validation code and the likes. So what I'll be doing now is, let me share my screen and you see Visual Studio. Okay, so I believe you can see my screen now. I'm on Visual Studio and I already wrote the code. Um, just give me a moment, please. Yeah, so I already wrote the code and um, all you just need to do is once you come over to, so I think, let me just show you the process. So when you come over here to a new project, to a new project, um and click on next give it a name yeah so um previously under the function the type of function that i want to work with we usually choose event grid trigger so that's um, in that case, we're able to work directly with the um, with the templated application that was given to us. But in the case of HTTP trigger, we are the one to um, specify um, the kind of handshake that will be done. So it's a lot more technical than what we've been doing previously. Um, so let me just go back. I already have the code develop so that we wouldn't waste time on this. Yeah, so we have the code here. Um, so it took me a while to, because the tutorial I was, I was using was based on um, .NET 3.1 LTS. So I did a whole lot of debugging to be able to um, make it work for .NET 8.0. So um, it might be worth it to have a closer look at the approach that I used and see how you can replicate it. I did a lot of debugging. I went online, looked at the libraries, the classes, and the ones that are deprecated. I tried to replace them and um, looked at multiple materials on how it was done before I came up with this, which works. So I'll be running the program very soon. We've already done all this um, in the last video. Still the same process, just that our endpoints will be different. Okay, so let me run this. Let me stop sharing first. Yeah, so I'm running it now. So let me share the output screen so that you can see that. Yeah, so our function application runs successfully, which is great news. So what I will do now is I will come over to, um, I'll come over to my command prompts 
and we are still going to be using ngoc which we've been using um all along so we are using ngoc again yeah so i believe you can see my command prompt now so i need to run um i'll just copy the code and slot it in and i'll change the port number to the port number that my application is currently running which is um 7166 7166 okay so this is what we need to be running click on the return button yeah so now what i'll do is i'll copy this forwarding url copy it so I actually want you to see um how this uh would happen so before i click on um to add the webhook i would share this screen so let me go to my azure portal first So now I want to add a new event subscription. This is our storage account, the one we used in the last video as well. So I'll give it a name. I can give it anything. Then I'm fine with blob created and blob deleted. Then for the endpoint type, we are still working with webhook because it's still a webhook, just that the type of function now is quite different. The approach that we are using is different. So the endpoint as well is also different. So I would configure an endpoint. Then what I had copied, I would paste it, but I'll put slash API slash the name of the function I want to run, which is um function one. That's the name of the function that is running in my computer. Function one. Um, yeah, function one. So I think this looks good. So I would click to confirm selection. Then before I click on create, I want you to see um, the end goal, could my command prompt was happening there. So the type of response, I just remember that in most of my videos, I wasn't showing that to you. So I would go over there and I want you to see, just take note of um, what's going to be displayed okay so let me click on confirm now so let me click on create rather so i'm creating the event subscription now why the function application is running hopefully it will be successful just take note of what is being shared in the if um the type of status code that, that will be ret returned so i think it succeeded on my portal i can see deploying deployment has succeeded so which means if i should go to my command prompt should also be okay this is if i go to my command prompt you can see that it is also succeeded okay so this makes sense so now let's go to our output the output for my uh, program that is currently running and let's see what's over there so this is the output now 
take note of, you can see we have a validation code and a validation URL, which means that that handshake is being done from here. You can see the URL, France Central, Event Grid, blah, 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 blah. So this handshake is being done from my application to the event subscription, which is on Azure. So, and that was validated. So this is um, a lot more technical than the previous example that we are doing, because in this case, um, we are not the responsibility, a part of the responsibility lies with us. So you can see that there's a trigger here and we can see the the um the log information from here okay so let me stop sharing let me go back to my a job portal okay so let me open this workbook Yeah, so this is active. Um, so basically this video, I just wanted you to see that um, when you need to choose the, uh, when you need to specify the type of function that you want to use to work with event grid, that's your event handler now. It doesn't always have to be an event grid trigger. It can also be an HTTP trigger which is a lot more flexible. I mean, we, in this case, we are using an HTTP trigger for a function app. So um, there are several ways to go about it. And um, you can see, let me share that code again, because the compatibility issues between older versions of .NET, the coding pattern patterns is a lot different. So. In the previous version, you'll be doing a lot of subscription. Um, you'll be um, calling a subscription class, a subscribe class and things around that. But in this case, there's nothing like that here. Okay, so um, just take note of that. Okay, so that's the end of this video. If you find it helpful, don't hesitate to share, like, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.